Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eglund, and this is a video on JavaScript basics. And um, all I'm going to do today is show some simple JavaScript um, within uh, using JS Fiddle. It's a pretty easy platform to use and actually be able to demonstrate what the JavaScript is doing. So um, just, to just follow along, I'm simply going to explain some code and um, how the code works to kind of get an understanding of the JavaScript behind and the HTML behind what we're doing here. So essentially, if we look over into this box, this is what is happening if we run this project. Um, I have a, a label, a text box, a label, a text box, a button that says create array, and a button that says insert array. Well, if I sit, hit, hit the create array button, it actually puts um, an array on the screen. It creates it and puts it on the screen. And if I let me put a value 99 so it's easier to see, and if I hit insert into array, it's going to insert value 99 at the index that I said there, and if I keep inserting, it's just going to keep inserting, and it'll scroll those down. But let's look at a little bit at the code that's behind this. So first, let's look at the HTML. Well, the HTML is pretty simple stuff here. I have um, essentially four objects on the screen, which I call, in this case, all of them, I use the input um, HTML tag for this, um, and I have a type and an ID, and a value. The value is what shows up inside of this. So if it's a text box with the ID of index, the value of 2 is what will show up inside that text box by default. And you don't actually have to have a value there. Uh, then I have down here a type of a button with the value create array. Create array is what's going to show up as the text of the button. And then the on click, which the on click is an event. And on this event, it's going to call a function called fill array. Of course, I have to write that function called fill array in JavaScript in the JavaScript area. And I have a second button that says insert into array, and it also calls a, um, a function on click, which is insert into array. And then finally, I have a blank a div here, which is basically a section on the screen for me to put some output in that I call output, and it's blank. There's nothing in it when I first start. So let's look at the JavaScript that actually performs all this. So in JS Fiddle, that's going to be um, in the JavaScript window. And what I do is I create two global variables, one called array, which is an array, and one called d, which is a blank string. So the first thing that I want to do here is I'm going to actually, um, when I hit create array, I call this function called fill array. And fill array does a couple of things. It calls another function called clear display, but then it just loops 100 times through and put some random numbers into the elements of the array. So array of i is simply going to be a random number between 1 and 100. That's what the math.floor or math.random does. And the loop will just simply go through this loop, and then it calls another function called display array. Well, these are also two functions that I've written, and those functions sh should be relatively self-explanatory of what they do, clear display and display array. If I go to the clear display, what you can see is that I set my global D, that was a, uh, the, the string I created up here, that global D variable equal to a blank string. And then I go and I find in the document the element that has the ID of output. And the element with the ID of output was that div that I created up there that was blank to start with. And it sets the inner HTML equal to blank. Well, basically what it does is it blanks it again. So at first it's going to clear that whole area and then it's going to go ahead and that's and that's what clear display does the last function which is display array and this is what it's going to do is it's going to fill in that string and all it's doing is it's creating this it takes the string and it takes the index value and the array value and it concatenates onto a string with line breaks so that what you're going to see on the screen is actually something that you can look at. 0, 43, 173. And remember, the, in, the arrays are indexed in JavaScript at 0. Okay, And that's all it does. It makes this string, and then it displays the string by setting the inner HTML property of the output, the div that's the output, equal to that string. And that's I did that just because it's easier for me to deal with that string. All right, well... Let's look and see what the insert into array does, because that actually inserts values. Well, again, I clear to the display, and now I need to get two values. The index value, which is really easy to do, because all I have to do is go up, find the text box that I created by the ID, which is index, and get its value. So, uh, But I do need to actually parse it to an integer, because I want it 
it's an index, it needs to be an integer. And since all the values in the array were also integers, I'm going to make the value equal to, that's going to be at that location, also equal to an inter, integer. So i is equal to this parse int, get the element by the id and its value, and the value is equal to whatever is in the text box of the value. Um, I then see the string, that d, which is my display string, inserting v at i. Okay, so I'm basically going to say I'm going to insert this value at this location. And then I call two built-in, I call, I call a built-in function of the array, which is the splice function. Now, um, in the assignments that I give, I actually make you do this splicing by hand by looping through the array and making those changes. But essentially, this splice function does all that behind the scenes, accepting three arguments to let them know where to, to splice the things into. And then it displays the array. That is essentially everything that's there. You should have a solid understanding of how all of this works, um, all the pieces. Realizing that some major points is by putting the array and the D variables outside of any of the functions, I've made them global. I have the ability to pull everything through what's called the document object model from the HTML. I can pull all that information over into my JavaScript by using the get element by ID or referencing the properties of those elements and setting values in the HTML. So this is all very basic, very straightforward JavaScript. We're going to get into some very complex JavaScript as we work through this, but um, this should be a good explanation of this simple example and how it works. Thank you very much. Good programming.